Hello again, everybody. Um, so today is February 12th, and um, again, I see a little bit of a connection between something from our Old Testament passage and something from the Psalms today. And I certainly realize that this is a bit arbitrary because it's just uh, somebody's idea of which passages to read for each day and kind of falls um, somewhat randomly, I guess, although there's certainly a system to it. But um, so that's not necessarily a, a solid method for biblical interpretation. But um, on the other hand, you know, it was the methodology often in the synagogues of Jesus's day, at least, to read uh, a couple of different portions from the law and from the prophets, and then for the rabbi to get up and make commentary on them and maybe draw connections between them. And so there's something of value, I think, in finding um, things in the New Testament, the Old Testament, that coordinate with one another, or throughout the Old Testament, that coordinate with one another as well. So I just saw a little thing that I thought was interesting today. Um, came to my mind from Exodus 34, verse 22. It says this, Celebrate the festival of weeks with the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the festival of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year all your young men, all, all your men are to appear before the sovereign Lord, the God of Israel. I will drive out nations before you and enlarge your territory, and no one will covet your land when you go up three times each year to appear before the Lord your God. Um, I think it's interesting. Um, national policy to celebrate the festivals of the Lord. Um, I don't think it applies to us today in the same way that it did to national Israel in the Old Testament era, but they were supposed to um, demonstrate their dependence and their trust in the Lord by coming to these festivals, basically abandoning the protection of their fields and their homes, uh, and trusting that the Lord would protect those things during these times of the festival. And it says that um, the Lord would cause mm, cause it to be that nobody would covet their land uh, during those times, and I think even beyond those times, that they were faithful to do what they were told to do. Um, but Psalm 33 also said something very similar in verses 12 through 22. Um, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind from his dwelling place. He watches all who live on the earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance, despite all its great strength it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on the, those who fear him, on those who, whose hope is in his unfailing love, to, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. So there's, I think, both a corporate and an individual promise here that when we place our trust in the Lord, then we don't have to worry or place our strength or hope in other things like horses or armies or bank accounts, whatever that might be. Uh, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, and he uh, will never let us down for those things. So it's I know it's a difficulty in our lives to put our trust in him and him alone. Our tendency is to find ways to be self-sufficient and to take care of our own needs, but uh, here it promises um, a couple of times uh, that we can put our tr trust in him, and that's the only place that is actually going to be secure. All right, that's it for today.